Hey pals, welcome to a new series on the channel in which we're going to have a look at some modern Star Wars 3 and 3 quarter inch action figures. Up until now, we've looked primarily at Star Wars Black series, which are 112 scale, and Star Wars Power of the Force, which are well, 3 and 3 quarter inch scale, but from the mid to late 1990s. We're, we've since moved into Power of the Jedi. Um, modern uh, Star Wars action figures normally don't fall under my purview because they're just too damn expensive at this scale. Uh, the vintage collection figures, uh, 118th scale, are almost as expensive as 112th scale Black Series figures. So it's just not a good value for money, in my opinion. And the same is true with those retro collection figures. Um, I have a very strict budget when it comes to collecting three and three quarter inch Star Wars figures and up until now no modern figures have uh, fallen within that budget. I obtained these at a shockingly low price. That's the only reason you see them on the table here. Uh, what we're dealing with appear to be five POA figures which I'm perfectly fine with. I'm growing up in the 70s and 80s playing with Star Wars figures that all only had five POA. I'm perfectly fine with five POA figures. Uh, like I said, these were produced, I believe, around four years ago at the time of this filming. And uh, a lot of these were store exclusives, which we know I'm not a big fan of store exclusives because it makes them hard to get at retail prices. And the retail price on these were not that outrageous, in my opinion. Of course, now the scalpers are holding all these hostage and are trying to sell them for outrageous prices. Now, some of these are more rare than others. I am aware of that. But I obtained all these for well below what I would normally pay for a 118th scale Star Wars action figure. So, uh, we'll look at each box set while they're still in the package in this episode. And in subsequent episodes, we'll look at them out of the package on their display stands, okay? So, we'll begin over here on the left-hand side with the Rebel Alliance. And from what I understand, these are all re-releases, sort of a greatest hits from figures that have been released in the past decade or so. Uh, but they have new face sculpts, apparently. So we've got a Princess Leia in there. That looks great. This is the Hoth Princess Leia. We have a Bespin Han Solo. And I, we'll get far better looks of these when I get them out of the boxes. Okay, Chappies? And we've got a Chewbacca. That looks really good. Okay. And maybe the best Jedi Luke Skywalker, Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker I've ever seen. Excellent face sculpt on this. And they all come with their accessories. Chewie comes with a bowcaster. Luke comes with his lightsaber. And here's a pretty nice R2-D2. It does not have the third leg, but otherwise that looks really good. Okay. Now, some of these are probably based off the uh, figures that have the little microchips in them. From what I understand, no microchips included in these. So these won't communicate with that dumb gauntlet nobody can get to work that have, makes all the ComTech sounds plays the vo the MIDI files or the WAV files or whatever they are, the digitized files of the characters. I don't think that's included in any of these, which I don't care the least bit about. Okay, so that's the Rebel Alliance box set from Celebrate the Saga. Next we have the Jedi Order. And before we go into that, uh, all logical choices in this box set. And I will talk about some of the choices they made for what they included in these. All logical choices. You might be saying, well, where's C-3PO? Have patience, okay? Next we have the Jedi Order. And so we have an Obi-Wan Kenobi from Episode 3. That looks okay. Perhaps the best Yoda action figure at this scale ever produced. That looks really, really good. Um, smaller. These might all be underscaled compared to... Some of them definitely are, and I'll talk about that. Uh, but these might be smaller than the Power of the Force and Power of the Jedi figures in our collection. Um... But that's okay. I'm not worried about that. And then we have an Anakin Skywalker from Episode 3. That looks good. We have a Mace Windu, presumably from Episode 2. He does have a purple lightsaber. That looks good. And, for some reason, an, uh, an astromech droid. Now, this one does have a third leg. Fancy that. So I'm going to have to flip this over to see. So that's R7A7, apparently a Jedi droid. I don't know why you would have included this. A more logical choice would have been someone like Ahsoka... Or any number of Jedi from the prequels, um, uh, Kiati Mundi or uh, Sasi Ten or uh, Adi Galia, any of those. Plo Koon, that would have been a good one to put in this. I don't know why they included a droid. I think Ahsoka would have made the most uh, logical sense to put in this. But hey, I'm happy to have another astromech droid in the collection. These are, for some reason, Star Wars astromech toys 
are very expensive. So this one wasn't. So I'm happy about that. So that's the Jedi Order box set. Next we have the Galactic Republic box set. And I do have a collection of clone troopers somewhere in this house. I'm going to try to find those. And we'll have a look at those. So we have a Phase 1 clone trooper. And I have to skip around here. That's Commander Cody. Uh, that is a 501st Legion Phase 3 clone trooper, I believe. Uh, I guess that's a Phase 2 shock trooper. Does that sound right? And for some reason, there's a battle droid in here, um, which was Separatist, not Republic. Uh, but it has a very distinctive uh, paint application on it. And we'll flip this over, and apparently it's Oom-10, um as opposed to Oom-9 um from Episode 1. Uh, again, any number of clones would have made more sense than this battle droid, like uh, Rex, that's top contender right there, or Commander Wolf, or Gree, or Bly, or any of the clones from the Clone War. Um, but hey, got a battle droid in the collection now. Uh, might be adding more battle droids to the collection. Stay tuned, okay? Have, we'll know when an auction ends today. Okay, so that's the... Uh, Galactic Republic set. Now we have the Resistance. And so there's your C-3PO. He's included in the Resistance set. And we also have Poe Dameron with a helmet. Finn. And we have Mary Sue Palpatine. And the droid. Um, BB-8. I'll be curious to see how this works. I don't know if there's a magnet in the head, in the body there. I don't know if it's flat on the bottom. And it comes with one of these two. This whatever it is, a little CGI thing for the kids that was shoehorned into the movies. Um, I don't know what it's called. I don't care either. Uh, but that's the Resistance box set. Okay. Next, Galactic Empire. We'll start over on the right-hand side. We have a Stormtrooper, perhaps a Sand Trooper, or perhaps a Commander, an Officer because of the pauldron. There's a TIE Fighter pilot, as if I don't have enough TIE Fighter pilots in my collection. Again, these are all 5 POA, it looks like. I hope this one has some shoulder swivel, this Stormtrooper. Otherwise, he is locked into that pose with his weapon. Okay? That TIE Fighter pilot has the gray crest on it. That looks really cool. Uh, I already have one of these for some reason. Uh, a Snow Trooper, which is very undersized. He's undersized compared to the ones, the others in the packaging here. That's interesting. It's a fine figure. It's a great figure. It's just too small. Okay, and here's a scout trooper. That looks really good, and I only have one scout trooper in my collection at this time, and that's the one that comes on the speeder bike with the splayed uh, John Wayne akimbo hips. So, happy to have this one, and for some reason, an astromech droid. Now, this is a, uh, th this one, uh, it's a, mm, it's got a Q in its designation. It, okay, R2-Q5. Uh, they produce this for the power of the Jedi, and that's one I still haven't obtained yet. So, I'm happy to have it, uh, but why? Uh, a royal guard would have made far more sense. Oh, that would have been sweet if this would have come with a royal guard. Uh, that would have been excellent. Uh, but, hey, uh, I'm, I'm a choosing beggar right now. I got a great deal on these. I'm not complaining. Uh, that That's a cool astromech, in my opinion. So, okay. But we've got mainly troop builders in here. Um, uh, many other choices you could have made, even an imperial officer. Uh, any number of Imperial officers would have been a good choice for this as well. Okay, now the Sith is the next box set. So we have an extremely good-looking Palpatine, as far as you can see the, the, the fabric, the texturing on the fabric there. He comes with a second set of hands with force lightning in them. That's actually really cool. And then we have, a, um, I almost called him Darth Cadus because that's what he should have been called, Kylo Ren. And the outfit, and that too has some neat texturing on the uh, on the uh, outfit there. And again, this is 5 POA as best as I can tell. For some reason, a droid, a protocol droid in red. Uh, perhaps a Sith droid. I don't know. Uh, this is good Darth Vader. That's a very good Darth Vader action figure. Can't wait to put this one out on display. Looks like the lightsaber might be bent. Hey, it's Hasbro. We expect that. And a Darth Maul. Uh, that looks pretty good. Okay, good face sculpt on that. Comes with a double-bladed lightsaber. Uh, Count Dooku, Darth Tyrannus, would have been a much more logical choice for this set than a protocol droid, uh, which is TC4, apparently. Okay, whatever. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm not going to, again, I'm being a choosing beggar here. This, these were dirt cheap, so. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think a Darth Tyrannus would have made more sense. And I'm, we'll talk about this more in the individual reviews of these box sets after I get them out of the packaging, okay? But, okay, there's the Sith set. Now we have Bounty Hunters. Let's start over on the right-hand side. We have a Bosque. It looks good, but I can tell you now he's too short. Uh, undersized. He's the same height as Django Fett here beside him. He should be towering above these others. So should IG-88. Those are both undersized figures. But it looks really good. Comes with the correct weapon and everything. We have a Django Fett. That might be the best Django Fett figure at this scale I've seen because they always try to include a gimmick with all the other Django Fett figures. Either a, a weird pose or a toe line in one of his gauntlets or a giant rocket pack on the back. This one, that looks really good. Okay, and so does this Boba Fett. Okay, again, it is 5 POA, so you're limited in posability, but I'm fine with that. And for some reason, a droid. This is an R5. Now, it's got a great paint app on it. It looks nice and weathered and worn. It's got the third leg as well, and it's called R5 P8. Uh, but again, you had so many other options. Cad Bane would have been a good contender for this set. Or Zuckus or Forlom or Dengar. Well, maybe not Dengar. Uh, but, um, in fact, you could have just put the six bounty hunters from the Empire Strikes Back in this, and it would have been a bestseller. Uh, but they, they chose to put a droid in here for some reason. Maybe it's a bounty hunting droid. I don't know. I don't care. But happy to have another droid in the collection anyway. And that's cool, the uh, wiring down there. But it seems to me that should be on the back. Nope, it's on the front on this as well. Okay, but those are the... I mean, even in the prototype, you can see that IG-88 is not tall enough, but, and Bosk, same deal, but hey, they, excellent looking figures, they they might be under scale, but they, they still look incredible, and Django Fett does come with two blasters, and Boba Fett does come with his space six shooter, that looks good, okay, and finally the first order, so we'll start over here, that appears to be a flamethrower trooper, Okay, and again, if his arm doesn't move, he's locked into that pose. There's a First Order Trooper. That looks really good, but this is the one that comes with the webbing. And this must be an officer, because he's got the pauldron as well. Captain Phasma, the, one of the most underutilized characters. Well, Finn is probably the most under underutilized character in the Star Wars universe. But Captain Phasma is probably a close second. Uh, and again, the uh, weapon silver doesn't match the... Uh, armor silver. That was the same problem with the uh, uh, Black Series version of this figure. And I'm sure the cape is going to be a liability, but hey, it, it, it's going to look good on display. And then we have General Cuck. I'm sorry, um, General Hux. And yep, good face sculpt on that. Uh, doubt he comes with a hat, uh, but he does come with a pistol. Now we've also got a mouse droid in here that actually has wheels. That's cool. Has an axle in there. Oh, yeah, that's really cool. And then for some reason, uh, another BB something, what's it called? BB9E uh, sequel droid here. I, I don't know why, I don't care why. Uh, two, three, four. What would a fifth First Order character, well, maybe that other general from episode uh, nine or whatever it was, might have been a, a good choice. Um, sort of drawing a blank here on anything better to include in, in this one. Certainly something better than that droid. But hey, Again, uh, for the price I paid with these, why am I complaining? Uh, I think as figures, and just, we'll find out what they're like as toys, but as as action, as dis display pieces, they, they look pretty good, Chappie. And that, that has to be said, all of these look pretty good. And from what I understand, these are all re-releases, but with updated face sculpts and perhaps updated paint applications and no microchips inside them that will communicate with those that Force Leak 2.0 gimmick or whatever it is. But uh, again, I wouldn't normally have collected these, but th they were they were available at such a low price. I could not help myself. And um, I'm actually looking forward to some photography with these, putting these in some of the old Hasbro vehicles from the uh, late 90s and uh, seeing how they stack up scale-wise with those. Now, I can tell you now, in fact, I have uh, a snow trooper right here. I can grab another snow trooper off my shelf uh, just to show you what I'm on about here is this may not be a snow trooper from this set but it is the same figure okay and here it is compared 
with uh, Power of the Force 2 Snowtrooper. Look at the size difference. So that is something to consider, okay? Uh, but nonetheless, I mean, this looks like a, a kid compared to this one. But, you know, scale has always been wonky when it comes to Hasbro toys full stop. So maybe that's something we shouldn't worry about too much. All right, so th this, this concludes episode one uh, of this series. And I'll probably do these... Uh, in some sort of logical order that I deem logical. Okay, we'll skip between good guys and bad guys, and we'll uh, take these out of the packaging, I'll play with them, and then I'll give you some reviews, okay? Thanks so much for watching, pals. May the Force be with you, and I'll talk to you again soon. Take care.